hey, watch as Rick and I talk about what officers can be doing in their lives when they're falsely accused in their community or by government, and they have to stand in the fire, and they have to stand in the lion's den. Get ready for a great podcast. Hello, everybody. Here we are. Remnant Revealed. Rick, how are you today? I'm doing well. Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. We've been, uh, we've been getting a lot of good feedback as of late. Well, we have. Um, I think it's episode 68. Yeah. Uh, where we interviewed Greg Stubbe. Yeah, that was Holy powerful, smoke. wasn't it? I went back and listened to that. My voice sounded like I'd been what? smoking 20 packs of cigarettes <laughs> in 30 minutes. and well, It was awful. Yeah, well, your so, voice was hurting, and you got it. Yeah, you got, got it, it back fixed. in shape, right? You got, sound a lot better. Thanks. Got, yeah, got released from the uh, last follow-up appointment. Uh, I think I got one in four months. That she just wants to make sure that the surgeon released me yesterday. Yay! Hey, good. Is doing the vocal therapy still and uh, getting some good things to try to keep my voice out of trouble. Well, you and, know, I think that time frame though, like when you we're down with that after right. the surgery and everything really <clears throat> proved that statement. Correct. The silence is bliss. You remember that statement? Oh, <laughs> see, see, see guys, you, you know, he accuses me of shoot, you know, firing across the line. Yeah. No, no, no. It's too no, late. See, he starts it. So see? you made good progress. Yeah. You're doing good. Yeah. All it right. was well worth it. Okay. Uh, but right. Stubby's interview was... Oh, my gosh. That was amazing, wasn't it? I've had law enforcement officers, military guys and gals, all kinds of people just send notices or text messages. Yeah. I think you have to. Yeah. Of how that touched people their... people posting comments down below on that message. What what do we call that one? Is it uh, strength... What yeah. do we call it? Strength and yeah, surrender. Strength and surrender. Yeah. yeah. Episode sixty eight. I know Episode that. Episode sixty eight. Yeah. Strength and surrender. And if you haven't watched, oh that, my god, you got to go back and watch it. The guy just makes me want to just go back to school, <laughs> leadership school. It's just, which I mean, you know, continued education. But I feel like I need to scrap everything and just start over. Uh, he's awesome, man. I tell you what, if we could ever do like what we've talked about for some time now but have just kind of like an r&r remnant revealed kind of retreat or yeah, something that'd be i'd fun. love to have that would there be fun yeah. and be one of the speakers let's or, do it you we know should I mean? do that imagine that dude sitting sitting around yeah. a uh, bonfire oh my god and just sharing like that hey if uh, if you would be interested in being a part of that send us a comment mm-hmm. send us a uh, mm-hmm. send us a little it's doable it doesn't have to be massive <clears throat> right even if you had I don't know, 10 folks right. that mm-hmm. got together, maybe even brought their spouses, and mm-hmm. you uh, you just had those opportunities to share, speak, yeah. dive a little deeper into the things that we're talking about. There you about. go. Why not? I think that'd be tremendous. I mean, it's, it wouldn't take much to do. Yeah. His humility is just phenomenal. Oh, are mean, you kidding me? Good Lord. You remember I kept saying, blown up, burned up, and shot all in the same day. All in the same day. Yeah. And then... And, and what did he say? It was a bad day at the office. Yeah, bad day at the office. <laughs> Five days of firing. Yeah. Think about fire that. Firefight, yeah. A firefight for five full days. And he said he tapped out early. The rest of the guys did 10 days. 10 days. Remember that? Yeah. Golly. Holy sh- What holy. a dude. What a dude. Well, I'm glad your voice is better. And, yeah, thanks. Uh, you're motoring along. You know, yeah. we're... Um, you know, I don't know if you can believe this, but let's think about this for just a second. We're winding down another year, so probably when this runs, it'll probably be the beginning of the new year, maybe, right, right around there. Um, how many years will this be now that we've been doing this? I think we're headed in, I think this will be year three. That's what I thought. Is that right? We've done, yeah. we, recorded, say? we recorded for about a year before we posted anything. Yeah. Then we posted one year. Did we just finish the second? Did we just finish? I, Is I this believe we three just years finished. finished. Yeah. I think we're headed into the fourth year. <laughs> Sounds crazy if you think about Holy it. Holy schmoly. Yeah, man. Hey, how yeah. about that? Yeah. That's what we keep saying. You string enough of these together. You You're got looking a, older. I, you got a channel. You got a, a thing going on. You look a little older. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about yeah. that. Hey, man, we've been. They make we, Botox for that. Too. We, we could fix you up. <laughs> never. We've been. Uh, We've been in it. 
uh, as a profession. Oh, I mean, as brother. of late, you know, this well, year it's cranking up again. Twenty twenty three now has already been identified as one of the most dangerous years for law enforcement in recent history, in recent memory. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of these stats, but they are off the charts. Um, you know, interestingly enough, the number of officers mm-hmm. shot um, in America is now tracked really pretty much in right. real time. Yeah. And I always say this, do you know who tracks it? It's the National Fraternal Order of Police. They've actually been requested uh, by the federal government, the Department of Justice, and to track through those. the Jack Byrne grants and whatnot to track those numbers. In addition, they're doing it in real time, and what they're able to show is um, they publish these stats every month. So we've got the latest stats as of December first, two thousand twenty-three, but these numbers have even gotten worse by by today when we're recording this. But listen to these numbers for a second. As of December 1st, 2023, we had already had 350 officers shot in the line of duty in America. Holy smokes. That's just being shot, not assaulted in any other ways. Right. 42 of those officers have been killed by by gunfire. And we keep going back to this. 130 officers shot in 108 separate ambush-style attacks. 108 ambush. Attacks, Attacks. resulting in 130 officers shot. And uh, as of December 1st, we're at a 23% increase in the number of officers shot compared to December 1st of 2020. Wow. Now, everybody knows how How dangerous 2020 was was for officers. 23% higher than that. And I think as of right now, our numbers are closer to anywhere from 30 to 40% higher. They just haven't been able to formalize and finalize those numbers. Now, what does that make? Where where do we hit hour-wise? Because I know we track that too, right? Yeah, so the latest that we saw from the National FOP, and I think this is with some of these updated numbers, is we're averaging an officer shot in the line of duty in America every 22 hours. Wow. That's just shot. Wow. So when you talk about looking a little worn, yeah, I mean, we're – you know, one of the things that we keep talking about is there is, without a doubt, just those numbers show you a war on cops. Sure. Across America. Mm-hmm. And so you think about our officers and their families, they're in the middle of all of that. Mm-hmm. You're in the breach. You know, I, I always say this. It's not like it's uh, you, you're you going to be or you have been. They are in it, in yep. the middle of in it. In the middle of it. Kind of like talking about Stubby. Yep. With that sustained firefight. If you think about it, that's what these officers are walking through every day. They're in this sustained threat environment. Right. Right? Right. All across this country. And, of course, their families. And we don't share this type of information to make you more afraid. No. We no. know you deal with that every day watching your loved one go out uh, in their uniform and in their car. We share this for more public awareness because uh, we know that politicians and those who get in office do everything that they can and are currently that's the that's the message that's that is the right. agenda is to break and tear down officers and their families because they know families will put additional pressure yeah. on the officer to break them down to then change it it's to destabilize way, by right. design right and yeah, we've but said they're that. not really just going after officers they're no, coming after you and it's what we represent that's right. so. and it's what you protect and keep at bay which is you and me, the the human being that that's, that's on the other side of that line. Symbolized by that blue line that's on go. my shirt is it's the officers that are standing um, in between the good yeah. and the evil. And if you take them out of the if way. If you take them out, then 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 you're Yeah, I've been saying you're, since you're you're the fodder. Right? Twenty twenty. Um you're not the mutter? No, not the mutter. <laughs> <laughs> I um, see what you did. Right there. I, I've been I saying it. since you, you threw me off since 2020 that really the focus has been if you break it, you can remake it. That's right. Yeah, We've that's what's that. going on. Yeah. And uh, few are willing to step forward and point to that. You know, people yeah. are afraid to talk about it, yeah. but it's absolutely what's occurring. 
And on the same, at the same time, we say that we're also seeing great God moments. Oh, without where He a doubt. steps in and just where human beings know there's absolutely no way possible any of this could have happened. Right. This is a statement you and I get all over the place regularly. No way possible we could have done that. No way possible we would have made it through that. No way possible. No other explanation. No explanation except for the power of God working in in our lives. And, of course, that's what we do this podcast for and pray and stand on the Word of God. And people are seeing it. They're seeing it. I'll prove it to you. This is the phrase that you will uh, um, often hear is, there's no other explanation. Yeah. Right? There's no yeah. other explanation. Well, there is. It's one thing. That's right. You know, how many times have we heard, um, I'm a really good cop. I'm really well trained. My tactics are sound. But as good as I am, I should not have survived that. Right. There's only one reason I did. Yeah. You know, most people will point up yeah. or they'll say a higher the power. Man upstairs. Or... You know, the point that I keep making is his name is Jesus. That's right. He's the one that said you're blessed by being a peacemaker. That's right. And he said you're a child of God. Amen. He's going to protect his children of God. Yes, he is. Even with these stats, as horrific as they are and atrocious, God is still in the midst of that movie. Yep. And I think what a lot of folks are starting to figure out uh, by many people, not just us, but many people that are making it clear, why don't we invite God into this situation and see what he does? Yeah. Put him to the test. Hey, come on in. We invite you in. But you got to invite him in. That's right. So He's a gentleman. He doesn't just barge in. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. But Whosoever will. Mm. Mm-hmm. He says that many times through Scripture. Whosoever will, if you would. If you will, whosoever will. So you, you have to have the will to invite him, and then he makes a difference and makes a change in that situation. So the redneck translation is, you want to? You want to. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got yeah. it. Got it. There you go. You but it is the truth. It is. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, well, where was God? Did you invite him in? Right. That's right. You know, um, yeah. that's a that's a big question for people to think about. And how many times have we heard, I didn't know what else to do. I was at the end of my wits. I didn't know what, I didn't think I could make one more step. I didn't think I could take one yeah. more breath. And, and just with my last thing, I, I just said, God, help me. If you're, if there's a God, help me. Even from people who didn't believe in him. That's right. And guess what? all of a sudden help was there. Yeah. Uh, supernatural help was there, and th- that faith continued from that point because they realized yeah. he was there all along. Do you know how uh, a testimony to this that we're seeing nationwide is? This is the other phrase you hear. Tell me if you're not hearing this now in 2023. It seems like things are starting to swing back the other way, meaning this pendulum that swings, it went so far out to the extreme against us. Right Now it seems like the pendulum is swinging back the other way. Well, who's doing that? Right. Right? Because I can tell you, it's not pushing. you, it's not me, it's not us. No. As officers, we're not doing that. It's truth that's doing that. That's right. It's the word that's doing that. Yeah. Right? And that's why we say facts matter, um, because he is the truth. Yeah. And where you stand. Mm. What you're willing to stand. One of the things that that uh, I loved about the podcast with Greg Stubbe mm. was the phrase he said, and you had him repeat it, and he did several times. And I may not quote this perfect, but you can go back and listen to the podcast. But he said, you really know what you believe mm. by what you're willing to sacrifice to hold on to that belief. Yeah, by what you give up. By what you give up. That's powerful. It is powerful because it really is the essence of faith. Um, If you want to have your own will, go your own way, do your own thing, Mm -hmm. you'll never truly believe that God is here to help you. Therefore, you'll never call on him. But when you are willing to yield Mm -hmm. your own desire, your own will, to him, then you start realizing he's been here all along. Yeah. 
It makes me think of, uh, there's a couple of stories in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament about the prophet Daniel. Mm-hmm. Um, and these stories, one has to do with uh, three guys that got um, kidnapped, you could say, <laughs> right? Uh, got kidnapped. Yeah. Made prisoners of war. Yeah. Uh, from their homeland. And uh, by King Nebuchadnezzar and taken uh, to Babylon. The king changes their names, mm. uh, turns uh, three of them, their names Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Mm-hmm. Um, and pretty interesting names. By pretty the way. interesting names. And that wasn't their Hebrew names. <laughs> right. That was the names he gave them. Right. And uh, and he forces them. <coughs> which many kings did in that day, forces them to start learning. They were already pretty sharp guys, Mm -hmm. very astute in science and all that stuff, very good students. You could say Mm -hmm. they were high-level college students. But he forces them into into, 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 uh, his process to infiltrate the Jewish life by changing the young minds of mm. these men and forcing them to take on a Babylonian mindset, birthed life mindset. So like indoctrinating them. It sounds very familiar to what's happening to our youth today and has for the last 50 years, a massive indoctrination into where we are now mm. and what our law enforcement officers are dealing with now. Uh, and the and the alteration of education, your and history, your background, your history, your who background. you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tear it, tear it down. Break it and remake it. He destroyed all of the Jewish things, all of the Israeli uh, governmental process, everything that they established through God's word, and the and so he's breaking the system that they grew up under, down, and he's remaking it Hmm. uh, through education, feeding them the best he can get them, doing all the things to alter their mind away from their God, their holy principles, how they were taught their belief system, Mm -hmm. and remake it to worship idols and worship him, the government, Hmm. and the leader of the government. Hold on, this is in this book. This is in this book. So it's like it's written for today. Right. Hmm. And so uh, he puts out an edict, builds a huge statue of himself, puts out an edict that everybody will, when they hear the music play. I always find this very wild. Wow. uh, Because every generation has a sound attached to it. Every generation has a music Sound. What do you mean? Uh, let's say, do uh, you remember what the music of the 1930s oh, was? Yeah, like a genre of music yeah. for that decade or yep. generation. You remember the 1950s? When did we talk about the introduction of rock and rock roll? Rock and roll, 1950s. 1950s. Yeah, Elvis rock, Presley. Rock and roll wasn't always here. Yeah. That generation. Jerry had, Lee Lewis. Right. What yeah. about the 1960s? Oh, yeah. There you go. What about the 70s? Yeah. How about, oh, that's an 80s sound. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. What big Metal bands. Big hair. hair. Bands. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, you got it. There you go. What 90s about the, were the 90s? boy bands. The boy bands. Yeah. yeah. And then we, and we've, you know, we keep right, moving right. forward. So every generation, every 10 years or so, there's a sound. Yeah, what Nebuchadnezzar sense. says is when you hear the music play, that's when you know to bow down to the image that's before you, which was his image, to the governmental image. You and, know what that's making me think of when you talk about it is what we experienced in 2020 where people were saying, Hit kneel, your knees. Kneel before me. Yeah. Bow down. That's exactly what that's like. Thank you. And and, and even painted stuff in the streets that you had and, to go and kneel and bow <clears> down to. And how many people did it? Oh, how many government and leader officials did it? 
Oh, wow. See, demons always look for mm. the highest level of leadership to gain the highest level of authority in a community, a city, or a state, or an area as they possibly can. Think about all those big city mayors that were doing that. Think about people in Congress that were doing it in front of the cameras. Which we, which later we wow. found out that the phrase, say their name, came from a Yoruba religion that worshiped the dead, taught to the leaders of organizations by professors out of California who were professors of African religious studies. So, so they say invoked, their name was to invoke the name of that's the exa- dead. That's exactly right. Hmm. Which which they are which they are on record and they are on recordings talking about how they invoked the spirits of those who had died into them and fellowshiped with them and had relationships with them. One of them, Patrice, said, she said, I've known them better since they died than I ever knew them while they were alive because they're in me. They're a part of me now. Wow. So that's what people were bowing their knee to. I don't care what they say. That's what they were bowing their knee to. So just like this in the book of Daniel, when they hear the music, that's the time to bow to the the image of the government basically of the, government. Of the king yeah of the king wow and so these, versus versus the god that you previously worshiped. that's right bowing their knee to god jehovah yeah wow pretty wild that's in here that's in here <laughs> uh, actually third chapter of daniel it's it's right there the whole story plays out so verse 16 says shadrach meshach and abednego answered and said to the king so they have an answer for him now this is what i'd like to say Everybody's answer ought to be. O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. In other words, we're going to answer you. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against, that means his whole attitude, his whole face. I yeah, mean, he, set his, you're going to what? Well, I'll show you. Set his countenance against him. Yep. Then, then, and you can read this, but what he did is he, not only did he throw them in the furnace, but he had the furnace heated up seven times hotter than it was when they first when, when they first got there. Which now, can was I ask enough. you about that? Because I think most people, at least, are somewhat familiar with the story of the the fiery furnace, right? Daniel in yep. the furnace, or whatnot, or in the book of Daniel. Um, here's my question: the furnace is already hot, right? <laughs> Why would he heat it seven times over? Because he was seven hundred percent angry, anger, he was mad man, filled with murderous. I mean, the um, furnace would kill you if you're thrown in it yeah. to begin with. Well, it's killing the guys even trying to get close to it to throw them in. Now, tell me about that. So, he commands the mighty men that were in his army to bind them up and to cast them in. I mean, they didn't even have a chance. Not, not only are they so throwing tie them up he, and then throw them in the furnace. But he binds them and ties them in there. That he heats seven times over, which to me, I guess, demonstrates hate. Yeah. Right? So they were bound in their coats, in their clothes, their hats, all the other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In other words, it killed the guys that went to throw them in. So they, they threw them in there, but they by, died at the same time. So by the guys that are throwing them in the furnace get burned up by the same furnace they're throwing these guys right. into. That's right. Uh, so, that so let me tell you, familiar as well. Let me let me tell you how let me tell you how uh, a, a wicked, evil government does. They are they you 
everybody should understand that uh, when you start getting into all the political stuff and you think you're going to win this or win that, you're expendable to that main leader. The very guy that gets you involved in this stuff, he don't care if you, if he loses you as long as he gets his agenda done. Who do you mean? Who are you talking to? In that? I, I, I'm talking to those who are so quick and ready in the community okay. to do not the, the officers, bit, not the officers, the people but who those jump on who these are willing, wagons. That's right. Those who are willing to sacrifice the officers to get their little agenda accomplished, and they use officers and the backs of officers to get their agenda done because they think they might get something, mm. meaning like money or stuff from the government. Once like grant those, money. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Once those guys get done using you, they, they don't care if they lose you. Boy, They don't care if they that. lose you in the process. Absolutely, we've seen that. Absolutely. We saw that out of all these so-called protests in 2020 where an organization and other organizations received millions, yeah, hundreds of millions of dollars right. of taxpayer money and corporate money. Yeah. And then after they received it, people quickly saw they didn't do anything that they said they were going to do no. with it. Enriched themselves they and moved on. They enriched themselves and moved on. So it wasn't about the agenda, huh? And what about all the lives that were lost mm-hmm. while they were doing their agenda mm-hmm. that they gained money for through governmental and corporate entities that sold other people who had stood with them for a long time, righteous people, sold them out. Now, what about those lives that they created the riots and uh, what about all those people that died you don't think god's going to hold them accountable for that you better believe he is you better believe he is they haven't gotten by with that yeah that's important to remember you know, many times a lot pe- of people have wanted to move past that and just forget no. about that i've watched it over the years i've been alive a while and i've watched people many times wind up with with mental issues demon possessed alcoholism, drug addiction. That Coping, they, trying to cope. Trying to cope trying with to what escape. they know in their own spirit That's they right. did. That's right. Torments them. You're going to tell me mm-hmm. that you're going to tell me that people who do, uh, that have to do jobs or do things that are very critical, that they struggle with, and we help them through with PTSD and all that, that the wicked who even more so was doing things that were not righteous. Yeah, that they don't experience Don't have it ten torment. times worse. They are tormented, my brother. Tormented. Well, we've seen that too, haven't we? Yes, we have. Meaning they are very uh, much like these dudes that throw these guys in the fiery right. furnace. They get consumed. They get consumed. They by lose their the hate-filled Boy, we're, furnace they're created, we're preaching, that they've created. We're preaching pretty good. Well, that's a valid point. Though, and I man. want to tell every officer and, and, and every officer's family, nobody gets away with anything. Those who've hurt you or tried to hurt mm-hmm. you or wound you or destroy your career or wickedly come against you with false accusations or false things, nobody gets away with anything. God, you put your trust in God. I'm telling you, God is the worst enemy you won't ever in your life. Vengeance is mine, says Saith the Lord, the Lord and I, I will. will. Yeah. He didn't say, I might. He didn't say, it's possible. He didn't say, well, I'm powerful enough to do this I for could. you. I or could. I repay. could repay. Yeah. I'll I flip a coin. Repay. He said, I will repay. You just let me have it. Yeah, you're not made to carry that. And, and it, may not be, mm. it may not be tomorrow. But I've seen many people lose, just just absolutely lose it because God dealt with their lives. So, Well, officers and their families need to hear that because that's the other part that can eat up the officers as they sure. start feeling like it's now upon them to make this right. It's now upon them to prove the righteousness of what they're doing versus the unrighteous. That ain't our lot. That ain't, that's not our... No. our, our uh, are junk to carry. God says, you let me handle that. You're not made to do that. That's right. And so often we try to carry that. And that is what implodes our officers. Yeah. 
it isn't necessarily <clears throat> i guess in this example it isn't necessarily the fi fiery furnace they were in it's what they try to do after that and i think the the value of this story is the next part that we haven't gotten to that's right is you're not the only one in the furnace that's right that's what we need to hear that's right so these guys get thrown in and uh, verse 21, verse 22, the furnace is so hot. But, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Hey, I, I, I see four men. They're not loose. I mean, they're not bound anymore. But I see four men loose. These walking. aren't the dudes that fell into the fire and got burned up because they were toast. They, they were burned were, up. Yeah. These are the men who were thrown in, who are now loose, walking in the midst of the fire, Hmm. They have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Mm -hmm. The form what we said earlier. of the fourth. Now, he could have only discerned that by the Holy Spirit. Because he wasn't He'd a never believer. Seen, he had never seen the Son of God. He wasn't a believer. Remember what we said earlier is his name is Jesus He's the one that called you blessed, called you a child of God. That's right. It isn't just that it's a, a heavenly help. He's saying he sees the image. That's right. And the image of God is Jesus. That's right. So he sees him, and he calls out to the guys and, and tells them. Notice what he calls them. You servants of the Most High God. That's in verse 26. Come forth. And come hither, and they and they climbed out of the midst of the fire. Now, ever how that furnace was built, or what it looked like, or how it was made, these men could be seen, these men could hear him and could be heard, and they all, they all walked out of the fire, up to the king, and then, when they saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power nor was a hair of their head singed. That now hmm. I have a I have a gas assisted fireplace. I always think about this story when mm -hmm. I like my fireplace. And uh, and when we first bought our house, all you gotta do is turn this little key and then take your little lighter. Yeah. And and it mm -hmm. just does that. Lights up in a rail and then you put yeah. some wood or you can put the wood on first yeah. and then light. And it's just to get it started. Then after it gets started and burning, you turn it off. Well, hmm. one day I'm going to put a fire in there. This is going to be good. And so, yeah. So I turn the gas on. And whoosh, you'll hear it, you know, and you see it just coming up. And I put the lighter in there and click it and nothing. And I shake it. You know how you do it. Shake it and click it. Nothing. And finally, I'm, I'm looking down and I lean in. And when I click it, it goes. No build up. <laughs> that, flame, that flame comes out, and of course I jerk my head back quick. Right, but it didn't. It, it wasn't quick enough. Yeah, it singed all my eyebrows. You can smell that smell of burnt hair because it just singed my eyebrows, my mustache, yeah. little curls of burnt hair. I'm like, it's like a cartoon. <clears throat> And I thought that these guys were in the fire, in the fire. 700 times. Never even up. smelled like singed hair. So seven times, 700%. To the point where up, it killed the other human beings just that threw them in. Smoked them immediately. Yeah. Doesn't even singe a hair Doesn't on their head. Doesn't even singe a hair on their head. And it says they don't <laughs> even smell like smoke. Now think about that. Nope. We were talking about a bonfire earlier. And we know that these are historical Nebuchadnezzar, he's a historical figure. These are facts, these documented. stories are facts, right. documented in other books of yeah. history. Wow! And so, then they change, 
And the king changes his word, and he promotes them. Now, all you officers, listen to me. Those of you who've gone through trouble, just to understand something, you put your trust in God, not only will he deliver you, he'll promote you. This very king promoted, promoted these men who stood for righteousness and for their ethical convictions and did not bow to the wicked God of the government of their day. Refused to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they went through some stuff, but Mm -hmm. they got promoted. They came out better, stronger, and absolutely went on to do great things. So, like the fire, I mean, they are literally walking within the fire that seems to be the fire of hell to anybody. Oh, yeah. They're walking within it, much like our officers are. Right. But they stood firm, stood in faith, did not bow their knee, did not acquiesce, uh, stood for righteousness. Yep. Um, their faith invited God into the situation That's right. to where even their enemy visibly sees God, Jesus, walking with them in the fire. And you and I have seen that happen personally. Amen. We've seen it happen for officers personally. Absolutely. Where they've been unjustly accused, uh, absolutely tormented in their minds, their lies. I mean, sometimes for years. For years. For years. And there's plenty of officers watching this that have experienced it or witnessed it all over this country. No. Happening. And and they were righteous in what they did, honorable in what they did, but been accused, falsely accused, beat up. I mean, slandered in the newspapers, uh, put on television. Just you just name it. Absolutely horrendous. You know what many officers say now is, We've entered this phase where in these deadly force encounters, these attacks on officers, these numbers that we've shared, they'll say to you, if I die, I'm a hero. If I defend my life, I'm a criminal. Yeah. That's sad, isn't that sad? you want to talk about a no-win situation. That's a no-win situation. Horrible. And I always say this, and what did they do? And if I get wounded. what did they do? I'm stuck in between. And what did they do? Yeah. They geared up and they went to work. Put it on, had... Head to the car. They stood in faith. Yep. They walked within the yep. fire. And uh, what we're trying to get folks to do is say, now is the time to invite God into the situation. That's right. Don't walk by yourself. Do not. You don't have this outcome. Hey, these guys didn't refuse to bow because they were tough. That's right. They refused to <laughs> bow because they knew their God. That's right. And even in that, they said, if he doesn't save us, we're still not bowing to false idols and false gods. That's right. Because we worship the one true God. That's right. And we're going to continue to worship it. We're not going to change who we are to the deepest core of our character for some little dainties or things that you have. That's what people refer to as don't sell your soul to the devil. Thank you. Now, we have a lot of people selling their soul today. Lots. Oh, man. Lots. A in, lot of our leaders like the old Nebuchadnezzars of the world today. That's right. Wow. Yep. Wow. Uh, but let's remember, if I may, help you remember what even happened to Nebuchadnezzar. That's key. He lost his mind. Mm-hmm. His fingernails and toenails grew out like a wild beast. <laughs> this is a story, man. And he And he ran around in the fields and ate in the fields like a stinking cow or a buffalo. I mean, think about Digging that. Digging the earth. just to, Lost yeah. his mind. Clawing the and earth. And it only came back to him when he began to declare, God is God and the only authority and was restored. So even the wicked can be saved. If they call upon the name of the Lord. Absolutely. All of us were wicked till we gave our heart to Christ. All of us were in it. We're all in there. So the same thing. It's not on you, officer. It's not on That's you, right. spouse. It's not on you, family member, to change these wicked people. That's right. It's on you to stand in faith in God. Stand firm. And trust God in the Walk middle of- within the fire when you need to yep. alongside God. 
him mm-hmm. alongside you. Yeah. And then you let him handle that. That's right. He will either break or remake these evildoers. That's right. It's not your job. Nope. Man. It's your job to put your trust in, in, in him, in God. And he'll take care of the rest. And I've seen it happen many times. So even the wicked, evil king, mayor, governor, whatever, yep. can still ch- change their ways sure. by putting their faith in God. Sure. But some, if they some don't, sell their soul. Yeah, that's right. Some sell their soul, never and and, and they never, never to return, never repent. Which, which, by the way, when people ask, well, what is the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit? Mm-hmm. Well, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is when you sell your soul to the devil, and you and you refuse ever to to repent. Didn't Jesus say that's the only sin, sin that can't not be forgiven? That's correct. Because you won't allow it. Because you won't. Because you will never repent for that. That's it. You 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 have turned over to Satan totally. You you never repent for that, and that's the unpardonable sin, because it's the one that you just absolutely refuse to ever, ever turn back, and and that's way fewer and further than people think. You know, it's not everybody that does that, and you will know when a person absolutely blasphemes the Holy Spirit because they they become just so Shake their anti- fist at God yeah. and and refuse to repent and turn I, away. I saw one turn to him. Uh, one of the uh, one of the big leaders back during the riots and uh, and all that just saw an interview with him. Uh, he was in the government. He was in the hmm. U.S. government. Uh, he helped to push the uh, all the COVID stuff and all that. Not a conspiracy guy. I'm not saying all that. I saw an interview with him recently about uh, him uh, turning away from his faith. Mm. And he says this, and I thought, better mark that. He says, when asked why he no longer believes... He says, well, I've come to realize that at the level I am in my moral and my, uh, I'm not quoting this perfect, but it's, I'm, I'm pretty close. At my moral position on life and my level of integrity, mm. that I no longer need the things of the church and I no longer need the things that I once put my trust in. That's that'd be blaspheming the Holy Spirit at your level of yeah. moral integrity. Yeah, you're now convinced, and of course, I, I you know I'm, wow. we don't drop a bunch of names on here. I'll I'll share it with you after the podcast. But wow, um, what an example though! What an example of blatant demonic. Um, well, even like that, somebody like that with that mindset and that in their heart, they are then the ones that will say, I'm the moral superior here, and you will bow to me. Well, not only will they, he did. There you go. He did. And forced not only this nation, but other nations to bow to exactly what he said everybody should be doing. Now, isn't there another example within the book of Daniel that's similar to this thought process, this lesson, this point that we're making here? I hate Daniel himself in chapter 6. And I think a lot of people are yeah. somewhat familiar with this story. Yeah. It's well known. Yeah, because we call it, you know, what do you do when you're in the lion's den? Yeah. Daniel in the lion's den. Now, now this, <laughs> and, and we may have, you may have heard this uh, growing up uh, or, or, you know, this, this story. But Daniel, now the thing you have to remember, if you look back in history, uh, the people that use lions in warfare, uh, these were not like lions you go down here and see at the zoo. <laughs> and then you just kind of fell into the, the zoo pit. Exhibit, yeah. Exhi- no, th- th- listen, these kings would take up to 1,000 or 1,500 lions and make them angry, starve them. And then when they were going into battle, they'd send them out. They would release them first. Wow. On the army that they were going to fight. 
I'm like, that's a battle strategy there. And we talk about getting a nosebleed as bad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So then, hmm. so so these are the kind of things that people miss because of the way we think about the Bible. So in this our wasn't world. just some natural den. Oh, this is no. a den where he held this, these vicious lions. Correct. And these are the kind of lions that. Uh, when people began to become Christians that, that were used by Nero and other um, uh, leaders of Rome and things like that that they would use to, to kill them or, or send them in front of the games. So the, the kings that are involved now, the king that's involved now, is different than Nebuchadnezzar. That's correct. correct. Okay. Yeah. A so, descendant or somebody yeah. after him. So it's Darius. Yeah. Right. And so Darius has made a decree because... What Daniel does is Daniel answers a problem for the king. Well, the king was very grateful. And, uh, and Daniel's a holy man. Well, you also have to understand that the wicked hate the righteous. Yeah, I buddy. So, so just like the <laughs> evildoers uh, run from the police when nobody chases mm-hmm. or, or, or run or hate law, or confront the or police. Or confront the police. Ambush the police. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's because they hate what the police stand for. They don't even know the officers personally most of the time. Right. They just hate what the officer stands for, which is righteousness. It's not personal. It's the principle. That's right. Wow. So these guys figure out a way to take Daniel out. And they're like, well, we know his character so well that he goes and prays every day like he's supposed to according to his faith, his Jewish faith. So when we see him do that, we're going to get the king to put out an edict. We're going to trick the king, get him to say it's illegal for anybody to pray to anybody but me. Mm -hmm. And when he does, we got him because we know he's going to. We know he's not going to give the king what he wants because he serves God. It's a setup. They do that. Daniel goes, opens the windows. He prays towards her like he's supposed to. They bring him to the king. King, The king's grieving because the king loves Daniel. Brings him in on Brings trumped him up in. false charges. Evil doers. False the, allegations. False allegations. That's right. And they cast him into the den of lions. The next morning, the king wakes up, runs to the den, and Daniel's still alive because the mouths of the lions were shut and couldn't eat him. Hmm. Can't explain it. Can't explain it. No, no, but the king is thrilled. But here's the deal. He's thrilled because he still cares for Daniel. Because he still cares for Daniel. But he had to. And he knows he got tricked, but he also had to obey the law. His own law. His own law. So, um, so this here's something we should gain from this story too. Be careful of the law that you allow people to pass. Our community should be very, 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 very aware of this story. Be careful of the laws that you allow to be passed. Oh, yeah. Because most of the ones that are going to be passed are going, you're going to be held to it. You have to live under it. That's right. You were trying to get somebody, it's going to get you. It's going to get you. Like throwing somebody into the fiery furnace, it's going to burn you up too. It's similar to, Mm -hmm. if I can use this without, I I think we'll be okay. It's similar to, well, yeah, I know we will. It's similar to body-worn cameras. Because I was a part of all the community meetings and and when we were getting body-worn cameras here. And one of the things that I said in a lot of those meetings was, I think you better realize uh, you, in your mind, you're thinking, well, we're just going to catch the police doing all kinds of things wicked. That's right. Um, This happened all over the country. Oh, yeah. And I kept saying, Hey, where's all the corruption? You need to understand what you're actually going to do is you're going to reveal your own actions. Yeah. You set a snare. You right now hide. Mm -hmm from all the public when things go wrong now you're going to be seen doing what's wrong well think about it people look at that and and they say 
I can't believe that even occurs. And the police are saying, that's always been occurring. That's We've always shielded been, you from that's that. Right. Now, because you wanted to catch us. Yeah. And when we do, rightfully so. Right. But you're also 100%. catching all of this. That's right. And that's why I always say it's like a mirror to the great underbelly of society is what body-worn cameras are like. Yeah. And now look at what you see. You see a lot of protest groups who demanded them calling for them to be removed. Oh, yeah. Can you believe that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can because I said that as well. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm the only one that said that. Right. But I did. I, I can speak for me personally. I did say that in many, many meetings. Yeah. You're, you're going to think you want to see all this. Promise you, you're not. And once you start seeing it, you can't unsee it. So now you're going to have to also deal with what officers deal with every day, and that's seeing the worst of the worst of humanity. Well, and also what you want people to see, you want them to see it unless it's you that they're seeing. That's right. So hmm. so these, all these men that conspired against Daniel wound up being cast into the same lion's den, and it did, and, and their, their mouths, mouths were closed. not shut when they got in there. Uh, because they 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 took care of them, so I want to say this to all of all of our officers: uh, you may find yourself in the fiery furnace, you may find yourself in the lion's den, uh, but God, if you put your trust in Him, uh, not only will God bring you through it, but I'm going to tell you right now: those who've done this, those who've lied, those who have faked. Those who have unjustly uh, sought to torment your life, your home, your finances, um, God's going to deal with them. And most of them are going to wind up in the fiery furnace or in the lion's den that they prepared for you. That's right. And it's going to happen supernaturally, just as we've seen and heard, I mean, heard even top officials of the land say, there's no way. A human or a man could have done that. Only God. Can I read this just to close this out? Yeah. And it's, it's the, uh, this is the uh, English Standard Version that I'm reading from, but it's at the end of the sixth chapter. And it's that the same King Darius, mm-hmm. who threw these guys into the lion's den, he then issues this decree to all the peoples after he sees and witnesses what happens, what you were just saying. Right. No other explanation. None. This is what he says. It says, I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble in fear before the God of Daniel. Come on. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. And I think that what that really says is this, is when you are called by God to stand on this thin blue line, even when sometimes you don't feel it, you don't want to do it, but you know that you have to do it because you've been placed there for a purpose. That's right. As challenging as it can be, as dangerous as it can be, as threatening as it can be, your job is to stand that line and stand right. on faith in the one who called you to be there. Yep. And if and when you do that and you invite him into what you're doing, he shows up every time. Every time. And the closing thing I would say is this, is what this all proves is that God will not be mocked. That's right. And notice he said the God of Daniel. Yeah. Make sure that the God you have in your life is not the same false gods that the world uses. That's right. Make sure he's the real God, the true God. That is right. The God of all creation. What a great... Man, a, man people I, need to hear that oh, today. Oh, yeah. Walking within the fire, Yep. even in the lion's den there. Um, either way, uh, there is a, there's a way out. There's a way out. There is, uh, there is, um, there is something on the other side of that. That's right. Uh, but you can't get there without Jesus Himself. That's right. And don't be afraid to remind people when they say, "Boy, God must have been here," or "Boy, this uh, we had heavenly That's help." Right. 
or yeah. higher power. Yeah. That's or the, the man other. upstairs. Yeah. yeah. His name is Jesus, That's and right. he is the Christ. Amen. And, uh, man. Powerful. What a great discussion. Thank you, my yeah. friend. Yeah. My, my joy. It's a great pleasure. Good to see you. Good seeing you. And uh, Hey, here's to a, a new year. New year? Let's do another one here. Bless you. Why not? And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know that you're watching. Tell everybody you can. You know, we've been doing this for uh, several years now, and it's just a labor of love. Yeah. And we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. I've been saying that for many, many years. I'll continue to say it. And uh, we're grateful for your life. We're grateful for your ministry. You minister to our community. We're grateful for your family. And uh, we're for you. That's right. And uh, we call you blessed today. Have a great and wonderful day, week, month, new year. year. And uh, we'll see you soon. God bless. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Rick and I trust that you heard something that will help your life. And if you believe that it would help others, please make sure and share. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified when the next podcast is available. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.